This has been a great discussion. We have reviewed and analyzed a lot of information uh, and advances in immunotherapy, second generation tyrosine kinase inhibitors, maintenance therapy, uh, ancillary uh, therapy with, uh, uh, directed against skeletal related events. To close, I'd like to get final thoughts from each of our uh, panelists. We'll start off with uh, Dr. Levy. Yeah, I think there's a lot of excitement uh, with some of these new targeted therapies, but I think uh, what's often not discussed is some of the preventative strategies that we have available for our patients who are high risk for development of lung cancer. I think we need to keep in mind uh, CT screening uh, as recently demonstrated a reduction in, in lung cancer mortality, and I think it's uh, the responsibility of the oncologist to educate the other members of the healthcare team about this. And I, I think it just uh, it doesn't uh, end with CT screening. I think there are other new strategies coming a, 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 along. One is a blood test, uh, particularly one called EDT, that may predict patients who develop lung cancer, and there's another one, a uh, breath test, that analyzes uh, breath volatile organic, organic chemicals. So I think CT screening is, is just the tip of the iceberg, and I think as oncologists, we're going to have an increasing role in educating the other members of the healthcare team about these strategies. In this regard, we've actually started a center that's integrating uh, smoking cessation, um, mm -hmm. screening, and then inevitably a pulmonary nodule clinic because if 25% uh, of those in the uh, screening study did have some abnormality that at least merited some uh, follow-up paradigm. Um, Heather, uh, comments uh, about uh, other issues, uh, particularly the adjuvant uh, setting? Right, so I think we've really seen a lot of, of new exciting drugs that have come out in the metastatic setting, a lot more to be explored, especially with immunotherapy agents, a lot of hope there. Um, but we want to see moving into cure, um, and obviously the goal is for that to be for stage four at some point, but where we can hopefully make a faster impact is going to be in the early stage patients. And so excited to see data coming out, hopefully in the next year or two with some of the large adjuvant trials, um, seeing if we can bring some of these agents that work in the metastatic disease into earlier stages. So radiant? Radiant with erlotinib, and also there's uh, the McGree trial with one of the vaccines, bevacizumab um, with the ECOG 1505 trial. trial, right? Uh, the, we're, we're a couple years off from that data. Finished this past year. with accrual, but we've got a little time for, to getting that data. 1,500 patients. Yes, More. 1,500 patients. Mm -hmm. No, exactly. Exactly, exactly 1,500. 1500. Mm -hmm. But one of the biggest trials done in lung cancer. Right. Um, and so really looking forward to seeing those data and, of course, looking at it with the oncologist optimism that we're going to get some practice changers there, but we don't know that yet. Um, and I'm also really, really encouraged by the drugs that are working in the secondary resistance setting for the ALK and EGFR, um, having spent a lot of, of time trying to do trials in that setting before that hadn't worked to be involved now in some where they are. It's just, I think, we're on the threshold of a, a new era there. Mark Sosinski, your comments? Yeah, so I, I agree with my colleagues. Um, in addition to that, you know, we focused a lot on um, all of these issues today, which really leave behind a bit the squamous cell population, and we've really not had any advances. At ASCO this year, we're going to see a positive trial in the squamous population with a new anti-EGFR antibody, nesitumumab. Uh, even though we know that that trial is positive, we don't know the magnitude of the benefit, but hopefully this will be a step forward. So that's what I I'm looking forward to, and, and keep stay, stay tuned for the results of the Certainly squamous and small cell have been two right. of our orf orphan diagnoses. <laughs> in the last uh, 10 to 12 years. Right. Most of our, not all, but the lion's share of our uh, progress has really been seen in the non-squamous population. Mark, I'm going to, Mark, Chris, I'm going to give you the final word. No, it's, it's been 10 years uh, since the EGFR mutation was discovered, and we've entered an unbelievable era of uh, personalized medicine. The truth is, the best doctors were always giving personalized care. <laughs> Let's be honest. And, and I, I urge people to use whatever opportunities and the data we have to choose the best therapy for patients. And we had plenty of examples today. The x-ray was bad, but the patient is good. Listen to the patient. Thank you, Hall. On behalf of our panel, we thank you for joining us, and we hope you have found this peer exchange informative. <laughs>